for the blood tonight. Amen. Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing but the blood. Nothing would do but the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, he said he'd never leave us or forsake us. But you know, it, it blesses my heart when I just think about the possibilities of being without him. But see, I don't have to worry about that. Thank God I don't have to worry about being without my Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, without you, Lord, without you, I couldn't face each morning. Lord, without you. Couldn't sleep in peace each night. Lord, without you, couldn't go on another moment. Oh, no, there's no use in going on without you by my side. Oh,
Could you go back to that part like a desert yeah. <coughs> in need of water? Mm -hmm. Please. Like a desert. Like a desert. My fault. That's all right. That's okay. Like a desert.
Sometimes in our midnight hours, when there's things going on that we can do nothing about, there's something left to do, that's to praise. Praise yourself through it. I remember when my dad was passing and he had lung cancer and he was passing, and I began to uh, think, of what, uh, what are you doing here? I was sitting with him that night. I'm no nurse. I wasn't any good to help, but I was there with my daddy, and I went into the bathroom by myself and closed the door, and I just began to praise the Lord in the middle of it all. The Word of God says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Sometimes we don't understand but we can praise our way through it and get the victory. We can ride through it with him holding our hands. And I thank God that we have that opportunity. It's for us that we praise. He deserves and he's worthy of our praises, but it's for us that we praise ourselves through it. Okay, Brother Nathan. Thank you, Rich. It's me again. I'm back. Praise God. I don't have a very long message tonight, so I won't be keeping you very long. I think one of these days I'm going to learn to not say that because usually I go over when I say that. Praise God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just
thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in these services, Lord. We are so thankful for your presence. We're thankful for your spirit. We just want to continue to draw close to you, God. You said if we draw close to you, you draw close to us, God. God, I, I just pray that you would hear our hearts, God. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would have be a hearts of revival that would just pull at you and be like David's heart, men and women after, after your heart, after your affection, after your favor, seeking you, wanting your attention, God. Because, no, Lord, we know that we're already the apple of your eye. Lord, let us have you as our treasure and our eyes be fixed upon you. God, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, and give us understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. I don't want to bring up the title of this message just yet. Because I think I want to do an illustration. Do you like illustrations? Do you like to be a part of illustrations? You do? Well... You got it. You won. <laughs> Let me get one of these chairs here. This is going to be your desk. Very good. All right. <clears throat> I am a, I'm going to be a potential business partner coming in to discuss business. I have questions. If I have questions, then what am I seeking? Answer is very good. <clears throat> so, give me one second. All right, so I've got a business meeting, very important. I've got a lot of questions. I need answers, okay? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go through this process. Hey, how are you? All right, um, I'm so glad I could come to this meeting today. I've got a lot of questions, and I'm ready to get down to business. Um, first off, I, I have a, a strategic plan, but I don't know if it's a good one. I, I need your input on this plan. I need, to, uh, I need to know whether this is going to be a good plan. I need to know if you will, uh, if you'll put some funds towards it. I need to know if you know anybody that would like to invest in the plan. And I need to know your thoughts, okay? And that's what I really need, all right? And I, uh, I think that's everything that I need right now. I want you to look over this and, and go ahead and, 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 and I want you to be able to tell me what you think, okay? Thanks. What was wrong with that? I didn't give her what? A chance to talk. A chance to talk. <clears throat> Sister, thank you. You did a wonderful job. I thought I had wrote it on here, and I didn't for this very reason. But under part 12, it is supposed to say, listening. Listening. Uh, I think this is such an important part of prayer. I think this is one of the most important parts of prayer. And it's the, one of the things that we desire the most is to be able to hear what God is going to say. But we never give him a chance to speak. 
It's just like this meeting. I had questions, I go in and I request things, I ask questions, I petition, and then I get up and I leave the meeting and I never give them a chance to even talk. That is the way a lot of our prayer lives are conducted. We go into the closet or we're driving down the street and we say, Dear Lord, I, 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 first I praise you and I love you and God, I, I need this, I need this and Lord, I would like for this to be this way and I want this and, and Lord, I pray that you'd touch this person I pray that you would uh, do this and I pray that you'd move in this way, God. And In Jesus' name, amen. And then we are done. We say... I wish God would talk to me. I wish God would talk to me. I wish he would talk to me. I wish I could hear God. I wish he would, I just wish he would speak to me. How can he speak if his children never listen? We think that, well, God is God and God's gonna say whatever he wants to say no matter what. He'll just interrupt me in my day and just say anything that he likes. If, if he's going to say something, even after I say amen, he'll stop me. Listen, he wants your attention. Will he interrupt? Yeah, he will interrupt. Most of the time he'll interrupt people who are willing to listen to him though. He gets my attention all the time. But my grandmother, my grandmother, she had a task in front of her when I was a kid because she would say, Nathan, be still, be quiet, be still. Because I'd be laying down on the ground, we'd be praying in the living room and she'd say, we'd pray and worship. And she said, now let's just listen to God. Ask him to talk to you. Well, he ain't saying nothing. It was just, I didn't want, I thought, you know, most people, if I ask you something, you're gonna speak. And so I would just say, Okay, he must not have anything to say. Can I go outside and play? But my grandmother put that in me as a child. And before long, I realized that I just need to lay there, close my eyes, and shut up. That is advice that we can use today that has a lot of wisdom. Close your eyes, sit there, and shut up. After you've prayed, Listen, in fact, uh, my prayer life is such where I have many pauses and breaks and I listen for the Lord because I believe that he wants to speak to me. Sometimes we think, well, I I know he he talks to this person or that. Who does God talk to? Who does he talk to that you know? There is... Think of somebody that you know, you say, oh, they talk to them. There's probably names that will pop up in your head. But it's one of the first names that pops in your head is, he talks to me. That should be the first thing out of your mouth is I know he talks to me. If you say, well, he doesn't talk to me. One of two things, either you don't give him a chance to speak or you are not listening. Listening and just being quiet are not the same thing. How do I know? Because I have told my son some instructions before and he's listening and nodding and then I say, son, what'd you say? And he said, I I don't know, I was thinking about something else. How many times do we do that? I mean, we can read the Bible and not even realize what we just read. Why? Because we're thinking about something else. If our petitions are, are, are genuine, if they are real, if we really believe that we are talking to a real God, then why after we ask a question, do we not just sit and listen? How real is prayer to us? Because God wants to respond. But he wants a people that are not in a hurry. 
He wants a people that will listen. He wants a people that will hearken. He wants a people that will have an attentive ear and say, Lord, you have got my full attention. You've got my undivided time. I'm listening. You know, part of what I believe is going to come out of what's going to happen, I'm speaking this thing. Do y'all still believe we're going to have revival? Three people, four people. Listen, you better respond. God will raise up the people and bring up, bring them in. Do y'all believe that we're going to have revival? Yes. Amen. I believe it. Do you know how I, why I believe it? Because I see hearts that are hungry. I can see it. I can see. I can see a difference in people's hands being raised. It's amazing what I can see. Where they're really reaching out and they're praising and they're worshiping. I, I, I can see it. I believe something that's going to come out of what's going to come to pass is I believe that there's going to be some people that are in this thing that are going to, for the first time ever, begin to listen. And guess what comes when you listen to Him? Vision. Purpose. God has been, you've been breathing in air and God's been watching you breathe and you've been walking around. God's been walk, walk, watching you use them legs that he gave you and watching you use them muscles and that strength he gave you. And he's saying, I wish you would just listen to me and give me a chance to tell you what I want you to do Amen. with that body that I gave you. That strength that you're using right now, that's my strength. I gave you that strength. How did I give you that strength? I made the muscles and the sinews that's in your body. I made the food that you gave thanks to me for that give you strength to your muscles. It is my body and it's my strength that I'm giving to you. So what are you doing with my body? God is waiting for a people that's going to come up in this time that are going to say, Lord, I am listening. I want to give you every second, God. We are so busy. Oh, man, can we? Oh, I just felt the power of God just hit just then. Oh, oh, sometimes he just hits like a wind and it's just heavy. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, it just you just be walking. All of a sudden, it's just, you just feel and blow you back. Oh, Holy Ghost. Lord, we are so thankful for your spirit. Can y'all just raise your hands for a second and just give him praise? I'm going to continue with the message, but I just, I just felt like he just came and sat down. Praise, praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we love you, God. <laughs> oh, God, you are special. You are everything. You are all that. You are mighty, mighty, mighty. Halamashatai. Oh, he's a worthy God. He is the only God. We praise you, Jesus. You know, we don't, we don't. We don't get away enough. You know, other countries actually pick at America about some things because they they say we're workaholics. And we are. We're very busy. In Europe, I don't remember. Over here, you know, we have a 40-hour work week, but really they pay you for 40 hours and you work 60 because you're, everybody's salary <laughs> and if, you, if you're not salary they, uh, they give you the, the smallest amount that they can get by with to make you say okay well I guess I'll just I'll do it and, and then they, they get you out of there right at 40 most of the time because that's all they're going to give you they're not paying no overtime uh, but overseas in Europe I think their, their hours are like 30 hours or 32 they don't work 40 that's too many we work more than 40. 
uh, I see it all the time in forums. They actually talk about it because they say, they, they say we don't see how Americans do that because they're just so busy all the time and it's like they can't enjoy anything. I enjoy my work, but over there they have vacation, much more vacation time than we do. Uh, why am I telling you this? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it bad? Is it bad on America? No. But what I te- want to tell you is we are so busy over here, so busy, that it is hard to find time to do anything. How many of you, when you get home, it just seems like you don't have enough hours in the day to get what you want to get done? That's just the way your brain thinks now because you've been cultured in that environment. Because as soon as you get to work and as soon as you clock in, they want you to get everything done as quick as possible. And so you're racing through the day. At first, you try to take your time and get everything just right. And then it's like, no, no, that ain't fast enough. And you're just like, and you're just trying to race and get stuff done. And so then when you get home, you, you, you've not, you don't know how to slow down. And so you, you race and race and race until it's time to go to bed. And when you go to bed, you, you're, 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 ti- you're, you're tired, but your mind's still racing. And so you stay up another hour just thinking in your mind. And you wake up and you're just doing your job or something in your mind. You're so busy. And so when it, it's time to wake up, When that clock goes off, you don't feel like you have slept at all because you feel like you've been racing in your mind. You've been busy in your mind. And then you go right back to work. And you have a hard time. When you get in this kind of mentality, it is so easy to leave God out of the equation when he is the most important thing that needs to be a part of your day. And we justify it because, well, I'm busy. We justify not giving him uh, 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 time and worshiping him. And if we get down and pray, we don't have time just to sit there and not say anything because I've already done my prayers. I need to be able to check this off the list and get up out of here so I can go get all them other things done. And God is saying, if you don't have time to listen to me, why am I going to answer what you've asked of me? And so you may have a blessing over your life, but the fulfillment is lacking because he says, I can't get you to do what I need you to do because you don't know my plan because you're not listening to me. Is this good? How many know God has a plan? Let me give you some scriptures. and See, I shouldn't have said that earlier. And I had a short one because now the Holy Ghost has done hit me and I'm, I'm feeling this thing. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11. I first want to read it to you from the NIV 84. For I know the plans. Who's I? The Lord. For I know. Who knows? Who knows the plans? God. The plans for who? You. For I know the plans I have for you. Who knows the plans? Who knows the plans? Come on. Who knows the plans? God. You say, I read this scripture. I know what it says. Why do I have to repeat it? Because you don't got it. <laughs> who, who knows the plans? For you, God, if he is the one with the plans, why are we trying to figure them out ourselves? Why are we trying to make up some things as we go? Why are we, like I illustrated earlier, why are we going to the meeting and he has the plans, but we don't get them? Come on now. My goodness. Look at this. Imagine this is plans for something to be constructed. Blueprints and everything. And she has the plans, right? And I come to her and I, you say, she says, I have the plans for you. Who has the plans? Her. For who? For me. 
And I say, oh, yes, yes, I, I, I know you do. And I'm going to do a good job. And I run out and I start building a bridge. And I'm building the bridge. And I mean, it's innovative. It's got technique, architectural techniques that have never been used yet. People look at it and say, that's the, I don't know, is there an eighth wonder? It's the ninth wonder, or if there's not one, the eighth wonder of the world. I think a lot of things have been said have be the eighth wonder of the world. <clears throat> and I finished the bridge. And I bring her out and I say, look at this. Look what it did. Isn't that awesome? It's innovative. They're going to put it in magazines. I've, 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 I've built this thing. You're welcome. And she says, I have the plans for you. I needed you to build a skyscraper. I don't need a bridge. I needed a skyscraper. See, did I do something good? I did something good. But doing something good and it not being the right thing is wrong. There are a lot of things that we're doing in life and God is saying, I have the plans for you. And we're struggling and struggling and we keep failing and keep failing at it and keep messing up and keep having a, a hard time. And we're asking God, saying, God, I'm just having such a hard time with this and I don't know why you don't bless me. And he's saying, I will bless you when you get the plans that I have for you. I'm trying to keep you away from what I don't want you having your hands on because if you do this, then you will do 20% of what you're capable of. But if you listen to me, you'll fulfill 100% of the fruit that I've sent you in the earth to fulfill. If all you know is 30, then you think 30 is 100. Why? Because it's all you know. I've done the best I could at this and I've put all my, all my sweat and blood into this and I've spent time and God is saying, yeah, but you did that. If you would have listened to me, I could have got you to bring out a hundredfold of the fruit that I sent you with with half the effort of the 30. He can, can you imagine working hard? Your body, you get old and your body is dead tired because you have done everything you can to make this 30. And God is saying, I could have got a hundredfold out of you. And if you would have listened to me, you wouldn't feel the way that you do. Going against his will is tiresome. Now listen, I'm not saying that everything's going to be a breeze. You'll be tested. But sometimes we have questions about what it is we're doing and we get so frustrated with it. And we need to take time to spend with God and say, Lord, I just want to make sure that I'm doing exactly what you have planned for me to do. For I know the plans I have for you. I go to God and I say, Lord, you said that you know the plans that you have for me. So I want to know the plans. I'm going to listen to you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Is what you're working on prospering you? Is it harming you? Is it giving you hope? Is it giving you a future? Can you see your future in those plans? You better consult the master builder and listen to him. Same scripture, but King James. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Has, listen, God will show you a vision of his plans. He won't show you everything the way it's gonna, how it's gonna be laid out, but you'll have a vision. A vision can make you go through every storm. It can make you face every adversary because of the vision. 
but you've got to get alone and you've got to listen to God to get the vision. Look, Moses, perfect, perfect example. Moses was trained in the best Egyptian schools and the best education of the superpower of that day. He had the best of everything. If it was today, he'd have the the best laptop, the best professors. There wouldn't be no expense that was spared. Amen? If he broke his pencil in the middle of a test, he wouldn't have to worry about sharpening it himself. Somebody would hand him another pencil. He had the best. But he didn't know what his vision was. Your vision begins to reveal itself in things that you may not even notice initially. He's sitting there and he sees the Hebrew servant getting beat. And he goes up and he kills the Egyptian. The next day, two Hebrew men are arguing and they, one of them says, what are you going to do? Are you going to do to me like you did to that other that Egyptian worker, he realizes everybody knows. And what does he do? He leaves for 40 years. He gets away from everything he has known. Do you know what happens when you get away from everything you've known? Your, your thinking changes. Why? I have to make myself mentally, I have to prepare myself before I get home when I have things that I'm wanting to do because I know as soon as I go in the door, my mentality wants to change. I can be, how many of you can think of all, I mean, you are ready to tear the walls down and reconstruct everything in your house when you're at work. When you're working on somebody else's stuff, you can think of everything. Oh, I could get all this done in a day if I could just do have that day. But as soon as you enter that, something about that threshold, your mentality changes when you come across that door and all of a sudden you say, ooh, remote. Ooh, recliner. And you fool yourself for a moment and you say, well, I'm just going to sit down for just a second and then I'm going to get started on all that stuff. And you turn it on and you a pattern begins that you have been carrying out the entire time you've been living there. You go to a certain channel and you begin to look through that TV guide and you, you go the same order. How do I know this? Because I've done it. I've had to break myself of these things. I used to sit down and do schoolwork on the computer and say, all right, got to write this paper, focused. First, let me look at the news. <laughs> and I begin to bring up articles and I'm like, oh my goodness, they are crazy. What are they doing? Before I know it, I'm clicking links and reading about it and I can't help but to see something that I don't know. I'm always, my brain is always looking for something that I don't know. And it begins, I begin to do research on something that has nothing to do with the paper that I'm writing. It has something to do with the article. We are so busy. When Moses got away from all of those things that are comforts, all those norms, he couldn't come in and kick his feet up. He couldn't come in and, I don't know what they did back then, grab his favorite parchment and quill. When you begin to put yourself in a different environment, you begin to think differently because you're not used to that area. That's why, you know, whenever me and Hope were talking about going to the, uh, to the beach in September, I love, I love going somewhere. I love, going, I love the woods. I, I love the beach. I love these places. I love to take a book. I've already talked about 
two books that I'm going to be taking and reading when I'm down there. I've already got them set aside and planned. I'm like really excited. I love to just get out there and begin to read. I can even think differently when I'm reading. Because if I'm reading, I do like this. If I'm at home and I'm sitting in one of my chairs and I begin to read, I've got all kinds of stuff on my desk, and I'll begin to read, and all of a sudden I notice I'm moving the book as I'm looking around at the desk. Ooh, I forgot about this. Not even looking at the pages. I'm look. My brain is looking for. I'm just. It's just the way it is in that environment. But if I get away, I can think clearly. Moses was able to get away from everything he was used to. And then what? He was able to hear God. Why? Because he got away from distractions. He got away from people influencing him and pushing him towards what they want his goal to be. He got away from people pushing him towards what they want to see him be, what they want to get out of him. And he's able to find out what exactly God wants. You can talk to some people, and it doesn't mean they're bad, but you can talk to some people so much and spend so much time with them that you begin to form and turn into what they are wanting to see out of you. And you begin to feel good by giving them what they want to see out of you instead of fulfilling what God has for you. That's deep revelation. Why? Because you're happy that they're happy. Man, I made them happy. But... Something's empty on the inside. Something's left undone. And you don't feel that way again until they come around. Why? Because you don't know who you are. How did David find out who he was? He spent all that time out in the fields, in the pastures. When you don't have anybody else to talk to, and you're spending time with them sheep. I, I know David talked to them sheep. But he had a lot of time just to listen. Why? He's listening for the wolves, listening for lions, listening for bears. That's some hard shepherding, isn't it? What do we have to worry about over here? Uh, mountain lions and coyotes and... Foxes, sometimes you just need to get away and listen. Whenever you pray, you need to give time, God time every day and listen. Look at this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The word thoughts there, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this right now. It's a, uh, well, yeah, I will. It's a uh, mach. Hash Ava means thoughts, plans, and it means purpose. Thoughts, plans, purpose. So this is saying, I know the thoughts, I know the plans, I know the purpose that I have for you. Proverbs 19, 21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart. Who has plans? You. You have a lot of plans. But it is only the Lord's purpose that prevails. It's only the Lord's plans that prevail. It's only the Lord's thoughts that prevail. This lets me know purpose is more important than plans. Come on. Purpose is the original intent behind why someone is doing something. Are you alive? then God is doing something. I want to know what his original intent is for me and why he created me. Amen? Proverbs 2, 1 through 5 says, My son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, make your ear, what? Attentive to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift your voice for understanding, If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. How many know God has some knowledge? (laughs) Look at that. If you will receive my words 
and treasure my commandments within you. Make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. That means he may show you something and you may not understand it initially. But if you will cry for discernment, lift up your voice, ask him, say, God, give me understanding. If you'll seek it as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, can you be consumed with what God wants you to be consumed with? We're consumed and obsessed with all kinds of things. If we would be obsessed about what God wants for us, we'd get some answers. Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. When you begin to seek for what it is that he wants, he'll begin to reveal things to you. And when you begin to ask for understanding and praying for wisdom, all of a sudden you are going to see how big this thing is, how important, how instrumental your life is for part of his plan. There are so many people that go to the grave with things they were supposed to deliver. And it never comes out. When you begin to seek for these things, you'll discern the fear of the Lord. That means you'll begin to realize how big this thing is and you'll discover the knowledge of God. He'll show you the understanding. We're almost finished. Psalm 135 and 6 is my last two scriptures that I have for you. Think about Abraham. Abraham had to leave his family. Why? Because he wanted to bring something different out of him. He didn't even know where he was going. Sometimes you have to just get away and listen. You know, listen, don't sit there and think that his family was just saying, uh, oh, farewell, we fare thee well and wish you the best. Anytime I've talked to, uh, to my mom before about, you know, we're, we've thought about moving here, they always say, well, well, y'all can't leave us. It's a natural, it's a natural thing. But if God wanted me to go, I'd have to go. You'll have good people, loving people, want to hold you back from doing what you're called to do. Even family. Can I tell you that? Can I prove it to you? Did Peter love Jesus? Yes, he did. When, Pete, when Jesus said where he was going, he had to go to Jerusalem, he was going to die, Peter said, Lord, we, I forbid it. You can't go there. And Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, devil. You are stopping the plan of God. I love you, Peter, but there's a spirit that's behind what you're saying and you don't even realize it. There's some things that may be holding you back from doing what you're called to do and you just like let it go because you say, well, I don't want to disturb the boat. I want the boat to be going in the right direction. Abraham had to get away. Why? Because God's vision for him was huge. He had to get away from what was normal. He had to get away from what... You imagine him telling his family, look... God is going to make a great nation out of my seed. Imagine you telling somebody that. I'm going to go over here to this island. It's uninhabited. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to create a nation. There would be people just mocking and laughing you. That's why you've got to get alone and get to yourself so you can hear the voice of God and so that you can be so confident in what it is that God has called you to do and get, because he gives you vision that nobody will stop it. Psalm 135 through 6, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. You know, when this revival gets really kicking, I... I I want you to remember this. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And tell him. 
Lord, I, I'm waiting for you. My soul is waiting for you. In your word do I hope. Can you tell him that? Say, Lord, in your word I hope. He's waiting. He's waiting for the Lord. My soul waiteth for the Lord. More than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. David was saying, your word is where my hope is. Your word is what I hope in. My soul is waiting for your word. I need to hear your word. I need to hear your voice. I need to see the vision that you have for my life. And David then says, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. And he repeats it, more than they that watch for the morning. Who's they? Everybody that has ever watched for the morning. He has classified them right there. Now listen, David was in many wars, wasn't he? The Bible says he was a man of war. When you had battles that were going on at night, you were waiting for the day to break. My grandfather was on the uh, USS Palawan during World War II, he was, uh, they were the escort for the, the trigger that was going over to Japan to drop Big Boy on Hiroshima. They were zigzagging across the Pacific. He was, uh, when you're on the ocean, you can, 30, when you look at the horizon on the ocean, it's 30 miles to that horizon. The USS Indianapolis was 60 miles away, so it was beyond the horizon. The USS Indianapolis was hit by a torpedo, and he said that night when that happened, they were 60 miles away, and the whole sky was just lit up on fire. They couldn't even see the ship. It was another 30 miles beyond the horizon of what he could see. But he said it looked like the sun was out. It was so bright. When they got to Japan, the war was declared over. That first night, there were still uh, uh, militants out that were, had guns. And all night, he said, they were uh, awake on the beach, just brr, 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 shooting at gunfire when it shot at them. Can you imagine being up all night? You can't see your enemy and just firing during the night. I don't know how you sleep during that. Could you sleep? He said he couldn't wait for the morning. He couldn't wait for the day to come up. Wouldn't you be like wanting to see? I just want to see the sun come up so I can see. David is saying, your word is my hope. I wait and my soul waits on you more than they that wait for the morning. Do you wait for his word? Are you that hungry for his word? Are you that hungry for his vision? Are you that hungry for, to, to get vision from him and to hear him? If you are, then you should give him a chance to respond. Will y'all stand with me? Close your head. Co close your head. <laughs> Close your head and bow your eyes. Close your eyes and bow your head. Can you open up your palms just like this to the Lord? And look deep inside of yourself because he lives inside of you. His spirit's inside of you. If you are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, guess what? His spirit is inside of you. The Bible says that the spirit knows the deep things of God, the knowledge of God. Can you just ask him right now? Say, Lord, I want what you want for me. 
I've asked for a lot of things in life. But Lord, ultimately, I want what you want. Because before I ever had plans, you had a purpose for me. And that's why I'm here. Because I'm here on a mission. I'm here to do something. There's something that you want me to do. And it is so important that you created me. Lord, speak to me. You know the thoughts. You know the plans. You know the purpose that you have for me, declares the Lord. So, Lord, reveal your purpose. Reveal your plans. Lord, revival is in our hearts. And God, as we begin, as our spirit begins to revive, as our faith begins to increase, Lord, let us give time to listen to you. We may shout with praise. We may sing loud to the heavens. We may clap. We may stomp. We may worship out of our belly. But God, let our soul be quiet. And let us listen for your still, small voice. Let us listen. God, we want to hear from you, Lord. God, your people want to hear from you that are in here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just watch over each and every one of us. I pray, God, that when we pray, whether it's in the car, whether it's in our home, whether it's while we're cooking, no matter what it is that we're doing, I pray, God, that it would be a two-way conversation. Our words would go up and we would listen for a response. You may not respond audibly in that moment, but God, as we begin to train ourselves to listen, as we begin to train ourselves to give time for a response, then God, we will begin to expect a response. And Lord, because we're expecting it, we know that you honor our faith God, you called after Samuel so many times, but you didn't ever say another word until he said, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. God, we're your servants. We're your friends. We heareth because we're listening to you. God, give your people vision. Give your people dreams. Give us visions. God, let us hear your still, small voice. Let us listen to you when you begin to speak to our heart, when you begin to show us things. And Lord, we know over time, your voice will seem louder and louder and louder because we will have had a conversation with you. God, when somebody calls us on the phone and they say, hey, it's me, we know who it is because we have spoke to them so much and we've listened to them so much that we know their voice. God, we want such a relationship with you and we want to have such conversation with you and to commune with you so much that when you say something in the middle of the crowd, we'll know and say, oh, it's the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, we listen for you. We praise you. God, you're going to begin to speak to people 
in this very building more than you've spoke to them. You've been yelling at them. You've been shouting towards them. But God, they're going to begin to listen. And there's going to be things that are going to be activated in their life. Their faith is going to rise up because they'll know that their instructions are coming from the Lord. They'll be able to go out and march against any city, against any principality, against any power because they'll say, I come in the name of the Lord and they'll know that they do because they've heard from you. God, let us walk out and carry our purpose knowing that it's the purpose of the king. Lord, we listen to you. You are our king and from you we get our instructions. Where else can we go, Lord? Before we go, can you just ask him something in your spirit right now? And then let's just practice this for just a moment. Ask him something before we go. Something in your spirit right now and then just give him a moment. Can you give him a moment to respond? Say, Lord, I'm listening. Now, if you really mean this, don't say it unless you mean it. But if you mean it, I want you to say it. Say, Lord, from now on, when I pray, I'm going to listen. I'm going to give you a chance to respond because I know you love me and I know you want to talk to me. I'm going to listen. Ronnie, will you play something for us as we go? I'm going to pray over you and then we, you'll be dismissed. <clears throat> I want all of us real quick, just to, as I'm praying, I want us to pray for, for revival. Father God, God, this place is anointed. These altars are anointed. These chairs are anointed. These grounds are anointed. This place has been prayed over time and time again. Lord, it's why your presence is so thick here, God. Lord, we just are so thankful, Lord, for the prayers that have been sent up to you and we know that nothing has been sown, no prayer has been sown in vain. Lord, we pray to the Lord of the harvest for every prayer that has been, oh my God, for every prayer that has been sent up for revival, for every expectation, for every waiting, for every longing, for every tearing that has taken place for revival, God. Lord, we pray to the Lord of the harvest that you would send revival. Lord, we stir up our hearts, God. We rekindle the flame in our hearts for you, God. Lord, when we... When we were first saved, there was a song that you put in our heart. We didn't have to hear music, but we just felt that song. We woke up with a smile on our face, and it carried us out the door. Lord, I pray, God, if that song has died down, that you would just let it be revived again, God, inside of us. That song that wakes us up in the morning, the song that you put in our heart, the song that you put in our spirit when you made us a new creature in Christ, let that song be revived in us and let it wake us up every day and let it carry us through our day and Lord let us meditate upon your word and sing songs and hymns unto you O God and worship you again in 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 our spirit like we did before God let us wait upon you let us have an expectation of knowing that you're gonna respond God how we listen for you because we want to see a mighty outpouring. We want to see revival. We want to see it start right here. God, not for ourselves, but God, for your body, 
for your body that's not even present in this building right now, for your body that's out there that's long and lost and in another country, God. We just pray for them to come back, come back to the home country where they come from, where they're supposed to be because there's a work they're supposed to be fulfilling. There's a work they're supposed to be carrying out. There's people that are supposed to be present for this revival that are, have an instrumental part in this revival because they have an instrumental part in the kingdom of God. We call them forth. We say, Satan, get your hands off of them in the name of Jesus. You've had your hands on them for decades. You've had your hands on them for scores. But the Lord says, now is the time they're going to return unto him and fulfill the calling that he's had on their life. He's not sent them out in vain, but he's called them forth such a time as this. And we just pray right now, Satan, take your hands off of them. There's people that are in the minds of the body of Christ that are in here right now. They've been praying that that, that person would return, that family member would return. God, we just pray right now that you would send out your angels and loosen the grasp that this world has this world has on them loosen their grasp and bring them back in right now for such a time as this <laughs> Satan you've seen our tears you've seen our weeping you think we're sad but we know the Lord is going to win <laughs> can somebody just stomp your foot on the devil right now and say you ain't having them you ain't having them Oh, Shanda Shatai. Hod, we just give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, touch your people in here tonight, God. Touch those that watch this. Stir up revival in our hearts. Stir up fire in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Ronnie, go ahead. Praise God. Hanamashanda.